Section 18 of Aspects of Love, an Anthology. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. The Poems of Sappho, an Interpretive Rendition into English, by John Myers O'Hara. Erotica Dithyrams Him to Paphia Immortal Paphia, have I earned thy hate that I should burn in passion's fatal flame? Is not my constant service thine to claim? My prayers appeal with praise of thee elate. Has not my life been one sole hymn of thee? one quivering chord on love's harp overwrought my soul has trembled up to thee in thought probed to its depth thy every ecstasy are not my countless heartbeats each a vow of tribute throbs a garland for thy gain the fates have drenched my soul in passion's rain pieria's roses twined about my brow the virgin harvest of my heart was thine i shuddered in the joy that half consumed the votive garlands on thy altar bloomed my days were songs to nights of bliss divine why try me then with torture gracious queen why verge me on this rapture's dread abyss hold breast from breast and stay the yearning kiss ah couldst thou fashion pain that stung less keen the throw of tantalus is mine to bear beauty that thetis like eludes my clasp glances that lure that make each breath a gasp and then disdainful gloat at my despair scornful she dwells beyond my ardour's clutch bathed in an aureole of carnal fire o oh, bind her equal slave to fond desire let passion's tingling warmth her being touch come to me goddess come as once of old hearing my voice implore thee from afar i drew to earth thy dazzling avatar accord the smile of piercing bliss untold ask me the dear suave question phrased of your sappho who grieveth now thy mad fond heart wouldst win her beauty she who frowns apart wild as thou lovest she soon shall love thee more o oh, fair olympian answer thus i pray release me from this torment yield my arms the transport thirsted of her folded charms in glow that welds her heart to mine for i eros from the gnarled branches of the apple trees the heavy petals lifted by the breeze fluttered on puffs of odour fine and fell in the clear water of the garden well and some a bolder zephyr blew in sport across the marble reaches of my court and some by sudden gusts were wafted wide toward sea and city down the mountain side lesbos seemed paphos isled in rosy glow green olive hills the violet vale below the air was azure fire and o'er the blue still sea the dubs of aphrodite flew my dreaming eyes saw eros from afar coming from heaven in his mother's car in purple tunic clad and at my heart the god was aiming his relentless dart he whom fair aphrodite called her son 
she the adored she the imperial one he passed as winds that shake the soul as pains sweet to the heart as fire that warms the veins he passed and left my limbs dissolved in dew relaxed and faint with passion quivered through exhausted with spent thrills of dread delight a sudden darkness rushing on my sight passion now love shakes my soul a mighty wind from the high mountain falling full on the oaks of the forest now limb relaxing it masters my life and implacable thrills me rending with anguish and rapture now my heart paining my bosom pants with desire as a maenad mad for the orgiac revel now under my skin run subtle arrows of flame and my body quivers with surge of emotion now long importunate yearnings vanquish with surfeit my reason fainting my senses forsake me aphrodite's praise o oh, sappho why art thou ever singing with praises the blessed queen of heaven why does the heart in thy bosom ever revert in its yearning throb to the goddess why are thy senses unsated ever in quest of elusive love that is deathless ah oh, gracious daughter of cyprus never can i as a mortal tire of thy service thou art the breath of my body the blood in my veins and the glowing pulse of my bosom omnipotent burning resistless thou art the passion that shaking masters me ever thou art the crisis of rapture relaxing my limbs and the melting ebb of emotion bringing the tears to my lashes sighs to my lips in the swooning excess of passion o oh, golden-crowned aphrodite grant i shall ever be grateful sure of thy favour worthy the lot of thy priestess supreme in the song that for ever rings with thy praises the first kiss and down i set the cushion upon the couch that she relaxed supine upon it might give her lips to me as some enamoured priestess at aphrodite's shrine entranced i bent above her with sense of the divine she had by nature nubile in years a child no hint of any secret knowledge of passion's least intent her mouth for immolation was ripe and mine the art and one long kiss of passion deep flowered her virgin heart ode to attis i loved you attis once long years ago my blood was flame that thrilled to passion's throw now long neglect has quenched the olden fire and blight of drifting years effaced desire i loved you attis joy of long ago love shook my soul as winds on forests blow this lawless heart that dared exhaust delight unsated strove and maddened through the night i loved you attis once long years ago with pain whose surge i felt to anguish grow suffered the storms that waste the heart and leave a desert shore where seas but break to grieve i loved you attis spring of long ago watched you depart to andromeda go 
Then I, as keen despair its shadow cast, O'er my deserted threshold sobbing past. I loved you, Attis, once long years ago. The thought of me is hateful now, I know, And all the lavish tenderness of old Has gone from me and left my bosom cold. I loved you, Attis, dream of long ago. How the fond words, impassioned music low, Sustain the sigh of love's divine regret. No length of time may bid the heart forget. Comparison Less soft a Tyrian robe of texture fine, Less delicate a rose than flesh of thine, Whiter thy breast than snow that virgin lies, And deeper than the blue of seas thy eyes, More golden than the fruit of orange trees, Thy locks that floating lure the satyr breeze, Less fine of silver string an orphic lyre, Less sweet than thy low laugh that wakes desire. THE SACRIFICE Upon a cushion soft my limbs I place, my every garment doffed for deeper grace, from burning doves embalmed in baccarus, the scented fumes have calmed me like a kiss. Beyond the phallic shrine that tripods light, I pledge with holy wine an image white. Anadiomene, than foam more fair, when from the ravished sea she rose to air. Daughter of God, accept these gifts of mine. Last night my body slept in arms divine. These sated lips and eyes that erstwhile sued, Accord this sacrifice in gratitude. Leader Once on a time They say that leader found Beneath the time an egg upon the ground, And yet the swan she fondled long ago was whiter than its shell of peeping snow. Amabeum, Alcaeus and Sappho. Alcaeus, violet weaving Sappho, pure and lovely, softly smiling Sappho, I would utter something that my secret hope has cherished, did no painful sense of shame deter me. Sappho, had the impulse of thy heart been honest, it had urged no evil supplication. Shame had not abashed thy eyes before me, and thy words had done thee no dishonour. Alcaeus, softly smiling Sappho, longing bids me tell thee all that in my heart lies hidden. Sappho, have no fear, Alcaeus, to offend me. Thy emotion stirs my heart to pity. Alcaeus, I desire thee, violet weaving Sappho, love thee madly, softly smiling Sappho. Sappho, hush, Alcaeus, thou must choose a younger comrade for thy couch, for I would never join thy years to mine the gods forbid it youth and ardent fire to age and ashes the love of selene across the still sea's moonlit wave selene came softly to seek the latmian cave her breast aflame with secret passions ruthless throw 
her scruples dumb and burning with desire to know endymion the cretan dance as the moon in all her splendour slowly rose above the forest silent stood the cretan women round the altar girdled close their clinging tunics made of some transparent fabric traced the every curve and lissom of their bodies with revering eyes uplifted to the round and rising planet soon its drifting beams of silver lit their faces soft and clear its sphere effulgent full defined above the treetops steeped in pale unearthly glamour all the landscape when the argent glimmer rested on the altar piled with garlands and its glow unveiled the marble aphrodite linking hands the cretan women moving gracefully with metric steps began to dance a measure to the goddess all so light their feet unsandaled pressed the velvet grass in treading that they scarcely bruised its tender blooming verdure slowly turning in a circle to the east their voices chanted in a plaintive note the sacred Ithyphalics. Then they paused, their steps retracing towards the west, and answered strophe by antistrophe with choric tones accordant, with the after song epodic standing all before the altar. Lo, the hymn in praise of Paphos was completed. To Alcaeus. Countless are the cups thou drainest in thy hymns to Dionysus, Alcaeus. War and wine alone thou singest, wherefore not of Aphrodite, Alcaeus? Spacious halls are thine where many trophies hang in Ares' honour, Alcaeus brazen shields and shining helmets plates of brass chalcidian broadswords alcaeus when with winter roars the thracian north wind through the leafless forest alcaeus thou dost heap the fire and banish care with many a tawny goblet alcaeus hippokim thus contend the maidens in the cretic dance rosy arms that glisten eyes that glance cheeks as fair as blossoms parted lips that glow with their honeyed voices chanting low with their plastic bodies swaying to the flute moving with the music never mute graceful the orchestric figures they unfold while the vesper heaven turns to gold turns to gold laricus while charming maids plait garlands for thy brows a laricus bring the pledge for this carouse like lovely ganymede brother mime and cool from thy patera pour the wine thy slender limbs have all a satyr's grace hylas the wood god dimples in thy face these maids of mine beloved and loving me my dreams have made thy nymphs to sport with thee i heard fair mitylene's plaudit cease or lycas menon and denominates and hail thy beauty worthy of the prize cup-bearer to the council of the wise no noble youth the prytaneum holds whose graceful form 
the purple tunic folds can match with thee when on affairs of state all lesbos gathers with the wise and great spring come shall divine be vocal now for me as when the hebrus river and the sea to lesbos bore on waves harmonious the head and golden lyre of orpheus calliope queen of the tuneful throng descend and be the muse of melech's song for through my frame life's tides renewing bring the glad vine-warming vigour of the spring the skies that dome the earth with far blue fire make the wide land one temple of desire just now across my cheek i felt a god in the enraptured breeze pass zephyr shod was that pan's flute o attis that we heard or the soft love-note of a woodland bird that flame a scarlet wing that skimmed the stream or the red flash of our impassioned dream ah soon again we too shall gather fair garlands of dill and rose to deck our bare white arms that cling white breast that burns to breast when the long night of love shall banish rest girl friends prelude deftly on my little seven-stringed bobitos now to please my girl friends songs i set to music maidens fair companions of the muses never toward you shall my feelings undergo a change chanted in a plaintive old ionic measure all the songs i give you are the songs of love andromeda what bucolic maiden now thy heart bewitches o oh, my andromeda of the strange amours round her awkward ankles she has not the faintest sense of art to draw her long ungraceful tunic yet she surely makes thee o oh, my andromeda for thy sweet unlawful love a fair requital joy and praise attend thee in thy keen perceptive taste for beauty daughter of polyanax of polyanax eunica aphrodite's handmaid bright as gold thou earnest tender woven garlands round thy tender neck sweet as soft persuasion lissom as the graces shy unica lovely girl from salamis slender thou as syrinx as the waving reed nymph once by pan the god of summer winds deflowered on thy lips whose quiver seems to plead for pity mine shall rest and linger like the mouth of pan on the mouth of syrinx when his breath that filled her blew through all her body music of his love gorgo gorgo i am weary of thy love's insistence thou to me appearest an ill-favoured child though i am than jello fonder still of virgins toward thee i have never felt the least desire yesternight i knew not what to do for pity moved my bosom deeply seeing thee implore harassed by alternate yielding and refusal i was half persuaded then to grant thy prayer at my door thy presence lingers like a shadow vain wouldst thou reproach me with appealing eyes dost thou think by constant proofs of lasting passion slowly my obdurate will to wear away gorgo i am weary of thy love's insistence and my strength exhausted grants thy wish at last manasidika 
set o Dika, garlands on thy lovely glinting mass of fine and golden tresses sprays of dill with fingers soft and twining while i stand apart to better judge those who have fair wreaths about the forehead breathing brenthian odour to the senses ever first find favour with the graces who from wreathless suppliant turn away dica manasa dica thou art shapely with the flowing curves of aphrodite eyes the colour of her azure ocean washing wide on cyprus languid shore in thy every movement grace unconscious sways the rhythmic poem of thy body charming with elusive undulation like a splendid lily in the wind as i stand apart to judge the better fair effects that roses add to beauty all thy rays of loveliness consented sun me till i swoon with swift desire telesipa sleep thou in the bosom of thy tender girlfriend telesipa gentle maiden from miletus like twin petals shyly closing to the darkness dewy on your drooping lids shall fall her kisses while her arms enfold you on your drowsy senses shall her soft caresses seal delicious languor warm from her desireful heart the flush of passion on your cheek unconscious with her sighs shall deepen all the long sweet night-time sleepless while you slumber she shall lie and quiver with her love's mad longing Garino. now the silver crescent of the moon has vanished with the golden pleiads drifting down the west it is after midnight and the time is passing as we pledge to passion and i sleep alone anger ill becomes thee tender soul garino shapelier is dica but less loved by me art thou still relentless wilful one annulling all thy protestations in the fervid past can it o oh, carites be thou hast forgotten dost thou love another even now perchance ah oh, my tears are falling yet in my despairing mood i lie and listen for thy furtive step for the lightest rustle of thy flowing garment for thy sweet and panting whisper at the door now the moon has vanished with the golden pleiads it is after midnight and i sleep alone megera thou burnst us megera with thy passions wild bringing from panormus such unbridled fires thou burnest us a supple flow of tortured flame raging biting searing lawless of the will thou burnest us megera love must no reserve curbing power to keep it keener for restraint arena haughtier than thou o fair arena i have never met with any maiden such a careless scorn as thine for passion proves a dire affront to aphrodite when with soft desire she wounds thy bosom thou shalt know love's pain and doubly suffer keep the gifts i gave thee long rejected fabrics for thy lap from far for seer babylonian unguents scented sandals and the costly mitra for thy tresses tripods worked in brass to plank the altar with the ivory figure of the goddess where the sacrificial fumes from sacred flames shall rise to gladden and appease her in the hour when at her call thy fervid breast and mouth to mine shall be relinquished 
Gongila. It was when the sunset burned with saffron fire, and Apollo's coursers turned below the hills, that on Metalina's marble bridge we met, Gongila, thou golden maid of Colophon. Like the breath of morning, or a breeze from the sea, fresh thy beauty smote me virile of the north. Startled by thy vision, transports half divine, flooded veins and bosom shook me with desire. Soon the kindliest sun-glow of Aeolic lands melted all the futile snows about thy heart. Damophilia Cold of heart, and strangely uninclined to passion, wisdom's vigil leaves thee, proud Damophilia. Sapphics thou hast written, verses in my metre, with a skill surpassing in the melic art. Love's superb enchantment thou art fain to banish, like the virgin huntress long by thee adored. Moulded by thy tunic, every arching contour of her chaste and noble form I dream to see. Even view her stepping from the leafy covert down the dawn-white valley stately as a stag. Long I sued, but found thee deaf to all entreaty, till one summer twilight, listless in the heat, soothed by slumber's languor and my low monodic voice that hymned a paean in the praise of love loath to yield yet vanquished as i knelt beside thee all thy long resistance to my kiss succumbed anagora anagora fairest spoil of fateful battle babylonian temples know thy luring song Rested from barbaric captors for thy beauty, thou wert made a priestess at Miletus' shrine. Once these flexile fingers, clasped in mine so closely, neath the temple's arches, thrummed the table soft. Thou hast taught me secrets of the cryptic chambers, how the zonars worship in the burning east. Raptures that my wildest dreaming never pictured, arts of love that charmed me subtle new and strange hearken to my earnest prayer o aphrodite may the night be doubled now for our delight phion philomel philomel in my garden messenger sweet of springtide from the bough of the olive tree utter tidings ecstatic linger long on my olden note as in days remembered ere the boatman that knew aphrodite ravished my vision fatal glamour of beauty beauty of gods made mortal ah before its delight i am ever fearful of heaven spring in breeze and the blossom grasses and leaves and odours on my heart with the breath of a vanished april is shaken shaken with thrill and regret of lost caresses and kisses and that Toria's memory at is never forgotten philomel in my garden messenger sweet of springtime from the bough of the olive tree utter tidings ecstatic golden pulse golden pulse grew on the shore ferns along the hill and the red clipped roses bore bees to drink their fill bees that from the meadows bring wine of melilot honey sups on golden wings to the garden grot but to me neglected flower phiom will not see passion brings no crowning hour honey nor the bee the swallow daughter of pandion lovely swallow that fears at my window swift on the flood of the sunshine darting thy shadow what is thy innocent purpose why dost thou hover and haunt me is it a kinship of sorrow brings thee near me 
must thou for ever be tongueless, flying in fear of Tereus? Must he for Etis pursue thee, changed to a lapwing? Tireless of pinion and never resting on bush or the branches, close to the earth, up the Asia, over the treetops. After thy wing in its madness follows my glance, as a flitting child on the track of its mother hastens in silence. Daughter of Pandion, lovely swallow that bears at my window, hast thou a message from Cyprus telling of Phaeon? Tidings She wrapped herself in linen woven close, stops delicate and texture fine as those the dark Nile traders for our bartering from Egypt, Crete, and far for Caer bring. Love lent her feet the wings of winds to reach, whose steps stir not the shingle of the beach. My marble court and breathless bid me know my lover's sails across the harbour blow. He seemed to her as to himself he seems like some bright god long treasured in her dreams she saw him standing at his gallows prow my phaeon mine in mitelline now hesperus hesperus shines low on the eastern wave off toward the asian shore over faint lines whose greys and purples pave where seas night calmed adore fair vesper fire fairest of stars the light benign of secret bliss star of desire bringing to me with night dreams and my phaeon's kiss dawn just now the golden sandaled dawn peered through the lattice of my room why must thou fare so soon my phaeon last night i met thee at the shore a thousand hues were in the sky the breeze from cyprus blew my phaeon i drew to lave thy heated brow my kerchief dripping from the sea why hadst thou sailed so far my phaeon far up the narrow mountain paths we heard the shepherds fluting home like some white god thou seemed my phaeon and through the olive trees we saw the tinkle of my vesper lamp wilt kiss me now as then my phaeon nay loosen not with gentle force the clasp of my restraining arms i will not let thee go my phaeon see deftly in my trailing robe i spring and draw the lattice close is it not night again my phaeon the farewell beloved stand face to face and lifting lids disclose to me the grace the perfect fire that lingers yet and lies reflected in thy eyes phaeon my soul beloved stand not to my mad passion all unmoved o oh, let ere thou to far panormus sail one hour of love prevail dear ingrate come and let thy breath like odour from a castlet thy smile the clinging touch of lips and heart anoint me ere we part fie on i yearn and seek but thee alone and what i feel must speak in all these fond and wilful ways of mine o mortal maid divine my girlfriends now no more hang their sweet gifts of garlands at my door dear maids with all your vanished empery ye now are naught to me fie on thy galley rides within the harbour's mouth and waits the tides and favouring winds far to the west to fly and leave me here to die the brawny rowers lean to bend long stroking oars and changing scene and fairer loves than mine shall soon efface this last divine embrace Phaeon, the lifting breeze, see at thy feet I kneel and clasp thy knees. Go not, go not, O oh, hear my sobbing prayer and yield to my despair. 
dark-eyed sleep dark-eyed sleep child of night come in thy shadow garment to my couch and with thy soothing touch cool as the vesper breeze grant that i may forget bestow condign release a taste of rest that comes with endless sleep lure off the haunting dreams the dire eumenides the torch of my repose for i would live a space though phaon has forsaken me nor yet be found on shadow fields among the lilies tall of pale persephone the cliff of lucas a far-seen cliff stands in the western sea towards cephalenian lands apollo's temple crowns its whitened crest and at its base the waves eternal beat its leap has power to cure the pangs of unrequited love thither pale lovers go with anguished hearts to dare the deep and quench love's slow consuming flame urged to the edge by maddening desire i too shall fling myself imploring thee apollo lord and king into the chill embraces of the sea less cold than thine o phaon i shall fall fall with the flutter of a wounded dove and i shall rise indifferent for ever to love's dream or find below the sea's eternal voice eternal peace End of section 18 End of the Poems of Sappho An Interpretive Rendition into English By John Myers O'Hara Section 19 of Aspects of Love, an Anthology. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. Book Five, Calamus. In paths untrodden, in paths untrodden, in the growth by margins of pond waters, escape from the life that exhibits itself, from all the standards hitherto published, from the pleasures, profits, conformities, which too long I was offering to feed my soul. Clear to me now, standards not yet published, clear to me that my soul, that the soul of the man I speak for rejoices in comrade, here by myself away from the clank of the world tallying and talked to here by tongues aromatic no longer abashed for in this secluded spot i can respond as i would not dare elsewhere strong upon me the life that does not exhibit itself yet contains all the rest resolved to sing no songs to-day but those of manly attachment, projecting them along that substantial life, bequeathing hence types of athletic love. Afternoon, this delicious ninth month in my forty-first year, I proceed for all who are or have been young men, to tell the secrets my nights and days, to celebrate the need of comrades. Scented herbage of my breast. Scented herbage of my breast. Leaves from you I glean, I write, To be perused best afterwards. Tomb leaves, body leaves, Growing up above me above death. Perennial roots, tall leaves, All the winter shall not freeze you delicate leaves every year shall you bloom again out from where you retired you shall emerge again oh i do not know whether many passing by will discover you or inhale your faint odour but i believe a few will 
o oh, slender leaves o oh, blossoms of my blood i permit you to tell in your own way of the heart that is under you oh i do not know what you mean there underneath yourselves you are not happiness you are often more bitter than i can bear you burn and sting me yet you are beautiful to me you faint tinged roots you make me think of death death is beautiful from you what indeed is finally beautiful except death and love oh i think it is not for life i am chanting here my chant of lovers i think it must be for death for how calm how solemn it grows to ascend to the atmosphere of lovers death or life i am then indifferent my soul declines to prefer i am not sure but the high soul of lovers welcomes death most indeed o oh death i think now these leaves mean precisely the same as you mean grow up taller sweet leaves that i may see grow up out of my breast spring away from the concealed heart there do not fold yourself so in your pink tinged roots timid leaves do not remain down there so ashamed herbage of my breast come i am determined to unbear this broad breast of mine i have long enough stifled and choked emblematic and capricious blades i leave you now you serve me not i will say what i have to say by itself i will sound myself and comrades only i will never again utter a call only their call i will raise with it immortal reverberations through the states i will give an example to lovers to take permanent shape and will through the states through me shall the words be said to make death exhilarating give me your tome therefore o death that i may accord with it give me yourself for i see that you belong to me now above all and are folded inseparably together you love and death are nor will i allow you to bulk me any more with what i was calling life for now it is conveyed to me that you are the purports essential that you hide in these shifting forms of life for reasons and that they are mainly for you that you beyond them come forth to remain the real reality that behind the mask of materials you patiently wait no matter how long that you will one day perhaps take control of all that you will perhaps dissipate this entire show of appearance that maybe you are what it is all for but it does not last so very long but you will last very long whoever you are holding me now in hand whoever you are holding me now in hand without one thing all will be useless i give you fair warning before you attempt me further i am not what you supposed but far different who is he that would become my follower who would sign himself a candidate for my affections the way is suspicious the result uncertain perhaps destructive you would have to give up all else i alone would expect to be your sole and exclusive standard your novitiate would even then be long and exhausting the whole past theory of your life and all conformity to the lives around you would have to be abandoned therefore release me now before troubling yourself any further let go your hand from my shoulders put me down and depart on your way or else by stealth in some wood for trial or back of a rock in the open air for in any roofed room of a house i emerge not nor in company and in libraries i lie as one dumb a gawk or unborn or dead but just possibly with you on a high hill first watching 
lest any person for miles around approach unawares, or possibly with you, sailing at sea, or on the beach of the sea, or some quiet island, here to put your lips upon mine, I permit you, with the comrade's long dwelling kiss, or the new husband's kiss, for I am the new husband, and I am the comrade. Or, if you will, thrusting me beneath your clothing, where I may feel the throbs of your heart, or rest upon your hip, carry me when you go forth over land or sea, for thus merely touching you is enough, is best, and thus touching you would I silently sleep and be carried eternally. But these leaves conning you con at peril, for these leaves and me you will not understand. They will elude you at first, and still more afterward, I will certainly elude you. Even while you should think you had unquestionably caught me, behold, already, you see, I have escaped from you. For it is not for what I have put into it that I have written this book, nor is it by reading it you will acquire it. Nor do those know me best who admire me and vauntingly praise me, nor will the candidates for my love, unless at most a very few, prove victorious, nor will my poems do good only, they will do just as much evil, perhaps more, for all is useless without that which you may guess at many times, and not hit, that which I hinted at. Therefore release me, and depart on your way. For you, O oh democracy, come, I will make the continent indissoluble, I will make the most splendid race the sun ever shone upon, I will make divine magnetic lands with the love of comrades, with the lifelong love of comrades. I will plant companionship, thick as trees, along all the rivers of America, and along the shores of the great lakes, and all over the prairies. I will make inseparable cities, with their arms about each other's necks, by the love of comrades, by the manly love of comrades. For you, these, from me, O oh, democracy, to serve you, ma femme, for you, for you, I am trilling these songs. These I singing in spring. These I singing in spring collect for lovers, for who but I should understand lovers, and all their sorrow and joy, and who but I should be the poet of comrades. Collecting, I traverse the garden, the world, but soon I pass the gates, now along the pond side, now wading in a little, fearing not the wet, now by the post and rail fences, where the old stones thrown there, picked from the fields, have accumulated, wild flowers and vines and weeds come up through the stones and partly cover them, beyond these I pass. Far, far in the forest, or sauntering later in summer, before I think where I go, solitary, smelling the earthy smell, stopping now and then in the silence. Alone, I had thought, yet soon a troop gathers around me, some walk by my side and some behind, and some embrace my arms or neck. They, the spirits of dear friends, dead or alive, thicker they come, a great crowd, and I in the middle, collecting, dispensing, singing, there I wander with them, plucking something for tokens, tossing toward whoever is near me, here lilac with a branch of pine, here out of my pocket some moss which I pulled off a live oak in Florida as it hung trailing down, here some pinks and floral leaves, and a handful of sage, and here what I now draw from the water, wading in the pond side. Oh, here I last saw him that tenderly loves me, and returns again, never to separate from me, and this, oh, this shall henceforth be the token of comrades, this calamus root, 
shall interchange it youths with each other let none render it back and twigs of maple and a bunch of wild orange and chestnut and stems of currants and plum blows and the aromatic cedar these i compassed around by a thick cloud of spirits wandering point to or touch as i pass or throw them loosely from me indicating to each one what he shall have giving something to each but what i drew from the water by the pond side that i reserved i will give of it but only to them that love as i myself am capable of loving not heaving from my ribbed breast only not heaving from my ribbed breast only not in sighs at night in rage dissatisfied with myself not in those long-drawn ill-suppressed sighs not in many an oath and promise broken not in my wilful and savage soul's volition not in the subtle nourishment of the air not in this beating and pounding at my temples and wrists not in the curious systole and diastole within which will one day cease not in many a hungry wish told to the skies only not in cries laughter defiances thrown from me when alone far in the wild not in husky pantings through clinched teeth not in sounded and resounded words chattering words echoes dead words not in the murmurs of my dreams while i sleep nor the other murmurs of these incredible dreams of every day nor in the limbs and senses of my body that take you and dismiss you continually not there not in any or all of them o oh, adhesiveness o oh, pulse of my life need i that you exist and show yourself any more than in these songs of the terrible doubt of appearances of the terrible doubt of appearances of the uncertainty after all that we may be deluded that may be reliance and hope are but speculations after all that may be identity beyond the grave is a beautiful fable only maybe the things i perceive the animals plants men hills shining and flowing waters the skies of day and night colours densities forms maybe these are as doubtless they are only apparitions and the real something has yet to be known how often they dart out of themselves as if to confound me and mock me how often i think neither i know nor any man knows aught of them maybe seeming to me what they are as doubtless they indeed but seem as from my present point of view and might prove as of course they would naught of what they appear or naught anyhow from entirely changed points of view to me these and the like of these are curiously answered by my lovers my dear friends when he whom i love travels with me or sits a long while holding me by the hand when the subtle air the impalpable the sense that words and reasons hold not surround us and pervade us then i am charged with untold and untellable wisdom i am silent i require nothing further i cannot answer the question of appearances or that of identity beyond the grave but i walk or sit indifferent i am satisfied he a hold of my hand has completely satisfied me the base of all metaphysics and now gentlemen a word i give to remain in your memories and minds as base and finale too for all metaphysics so to the students the old professor at the close of his crowded course having studied the new and antique the greek and germanic systems 
Kant, having studied and stated Fichte and Schelling and Hegel, stated the law of Plato and Socrates greater than Plato, and greater than Socrates sought and stated Christ divine, having studied long, I see reminiscent today those Greek and Germanic systems, see the philosophies all Christian churches and tenets see, yet underneath Socrates clearly see, and underneath Christ the divine I see, the dear love of man for his comrade, the attraction of friend to friend, of the well-married husband and wife of children and parents, of city for city, and land for land. Recorders, Ages Hence Recorders, Ages Hence, Come, I will take you down underneath this impassive exterior. I will tell you what to say of me. Publish my name, and hang up my picture as that of the tenderest lover, the friend the lover's portrait, of whom his friend his lover was fondest, who was not proud of his songs, but of the measureless ocean of love within him, and freely poured it forth, who often walked lonesome walks, thinking of his dear friends, his lovers, who pensive away from one he loved, often lay sleepless and dissatisfied at night, who knew too well the sick, sick dread, as the one he loved might secretly be indifferent to him, whose happiest days were far away through fields, in woods on hills, he and another wandering hand in hand, they twain apart from other men, who oft as he sauntered the streets, curved with his arm the shoulder of his friend, while the arm of his friend rested upon him also. When I heard at the close of the day. When I heard at the close of the day how my name had been received with plaudits in the capital, or still it was not a happy night for me that followed, and else when I caroused, or when my plans were accomplished, still I was not happy. But the day when I rose at dawn from the bed of perfect health, refreshed, singing, inhaling the ripe breath of autumn, when I saw the full moon in the west grow pale and disappear in the morning light, when I wandered alone over the beach and undressing bathed, laughing with the cool waters, and saw the sun rise, and when I thought how my dear friend, my lover, was on his way coming, oh, then I was happy, oh, then each breath tasted sweeter, and all that day my food nourished me more, and the beautiful day passed well, and the next came with equal joy, and with the next at evening came my friend, and that night, while all was still, I heard the waters roll slowly continually up the shores, I heard the hissing rustle of the liquid and sands as directed to me, whispering to congratulate me, for the one I loved most lay sleeping by me under the same cover in the cool night, in the stillness, in the autumn moonbeams his face was inclined toward me, and his arm lay lightly around my breast, and that night I was happy. Are you the new person drawn toward me? Are you the new person drawn toward me? Ah, to begin with, take warning. I am surely far different from what you suppose. Do you suppose you will find in me your ideal? Do you think it so easy to have me become your lover? Do you think the friendship of me would be unalloyed satisfaction? Do you think I am trusty and faithful? Do you see no further than this facade, this smooth and tolerant manner of me? Do you suppose yourself advancing on real ground toward a real heroic man? Have you no thought, O oh dreamer, that it may be all mere illusion? Roots and leaves themselves alone. Roots and leaves themselves alone are these, sense brought to men and women from the wild woods and pond side, 
breast sorrel and pinks of love fingers that wind around tighter than vines gushes from the throats of birds hid in the foliage of trees as the sun is risen breezes of land and love set from living shores to you on the living sea to you o sailors frost mellowed berries and third month twigs offered fresh to young persons wandering out in the fields when the winter breaks up love buds put before you and within you whoever you are buds to be unfolded on the old terms if you bring the warmth of the sun to them they will open and bring form colour perfume to you if you become the aliment and the wet they will become flowers fruits tall branches and trees not heat flames up and consumes not heat flames up and consumes not sea waves hurry in and out not the air delicious and dry the air of ripe summer bears lightly along white down balls of myriads of seeds weighted sailing gracefully to drop where they may not these oh none of these more than the flames of me consuming burning for his love whom i love oh none more than i hurrying in and out does the tide hurry seeking something and never give up oh i the same oh nor down balls nor perfumes nor the high rain emitting clouds are borne through the open air any more than my soul is borne through the open air wafted in all directions oh love for friendship for you trickle drops trickle drops my blue veins leaving oh drops of me trickle no drops candid from me falling drip bleeding drops from wounds made to free you whence you were prisoned from my face from my forehead and lips from my breast from within where i was concealed press forth red drops confession drops stain every page stain every song i sing every word i say bloody drops let them know your scarlet heat let them glisten, saturate them with yourself, all ashamed and wet, glow upon all I have written or shall write, bleeding drops, let it all be seen in your light, blushing drops. City of Orgies City of Orgies, walks and joys, cities whom that i have lived and sung in your midst will one day make not the pageants of you not your shifting tableaus your spectacles repay me not the interminable rows of your houses nor the ships at the wharves nor the processions in the streets nor the bright windows with goods in them nor to converse with learned persons or bear my share in the soiree or feast not those but as I pass, O oh, Manhattan, your frequent and swift flash of eyes offering me love, offering response to my own, these repay me, lovers, continual lovers, only repay me. Behold this swarthy face. Behold this swarthy face, these grey eyes, this beard, the white wool unclipped upon my neck, my brown hands and the silent manner of me without charm yet comes one a man at an ease and ever at parting kisses me lightly on the lips with robust love and i on the crossing of the street or on the ship's deck give a kiss in return we observe that salute of american comrades land and sea we are those two natural and nonchalant persons I saw in Louisiana a live oak growing. I saw in Louisiana a live oak growing. All alone stood it, and the moss hung down from the branches. 
without any companion it grew there uttering joyous of dark green and its look rude unbending lusty made me think of myself but i wondered how it could utter joyous leaves standing alone there without its friend near for i knew i could not and i broke off a twig with a certain number of leaves upon it and twined around it a little moss and brought it away and i have placed it in sight in my room it is not needed to remind me as of my own dear friends for i believe lately i think of little else than of them yet it remains to me a curious token it makes me think of manly love for all that and though the live oak glistens there in louisiana solitary in a wide in a wide flat space uttering joyous leaves all its life without a friend a lover near i know very well i could not to a stranger passing stranger you do not know how longingly i look upon you you must be stranger you do not know how longingly i look upon you you must be he i was seeking or she i was seeking it comes to me as of a dream i have somewhere surely lived a life of joy with you all is recalled as we flit by each other fluid affectionate chaste matured you grew up with me were a boy with me or a girl with me i ate with you and slept with you your body has become not yours only nor left my body mine only you give me the pleasure of your eyes face flesh as we pass you take of my beard breast hands in return i am not to speak to you i am to think of you when i sit alone or wake at night alone i am to wake i do not doubt i am to meet you again i am to see to it that i do not lose you this moment yearning and thoughtful this moment yearning and thoughtful sitting alone it seems to me there are other men in other lands yearning and thoughtful it seems to me passing stranger you do not know how longingly i look upon you you must be he i was seeking or she i was seeking it comes to me as of a dream i have somewhere surely lived a life of joy with you all is recalled as we flit by each other fluid affectionate chaste matured you grew up with me were a boy with me or a girl with me i ate with you and slept with you your body has become not yours only nor left my body mine only you give me the pleasure of your eyes face flesh as we pass you take of my beard breast hands in return i am not to speak to you i am to think of you when i sit alone or wake at night alone i am to wait i do not doubt i am to meet you again i am to see to it that i do not lose you this moment yearning and thoughtful this moment yearning and thoughtful sitting alone it seems to me there are other men in other lands yearning and thoughtful it seems to me i can look over and behold them in germany italy france spain or far far away in china or in russia or talking other dialects and it seems to me if i could know those men i should become attached to them as i do to men in my own lands oh i know we should be brethren and lovers i know i should be happy with them i hear it was charged against me i hear it was charged against me that i sought to destroy institutions but really i am neither for nor against institutions what indeed have i in common with them or what with the destruction of them only i will establish in the manhattan and in every city of these states in land and seaboard and in the fields and woods and above every keel little or large that dents the water without edifices or rules or trustees or any argument 
the institution of the dear love of comrades. The prairie grass dividing. The prairie grass dividing, its special odour breathing, I demand of it the spiritual corresponding, demand the most copious and close companionship of men, demand the blades to rise of words, acts, being, those of the open atmosphere, coarse, sunlit, fresh, nutritious, those that go their own gait erect, stepping with freedom and command, leading, not following, those with a never quelled audacity, those with sweet and lusty flesh, clear of taint, those that look carelessly in the faces of presidents and governors, as to say, who are you? Those of earth-born passion, simple, never constrained, never obedient, those of inland America. When I peruse the conquered fame, when I peruse the conquered fame of heroes, and the victories of mighty generals, I do not envy the generals, nor the president in his presidency, nor the rich in his great house, but when I hear of the brotherhood of lovers, how it was with them, how together through life, through dangers, odium, unchanging, long and long, through youth and through middle and old age, how unfaltering, how affectionate and faithful they were, then I am pensive, I hastily walk away filled with the bitterest envy. We two boys together clinging. We two boys together clinging, one the other never leaving, up and down the roads going, north and south excursions making, power enjoying, elbows stretching, fingers clutching, armed and fearless, eating, drinking, sleeping, loving, no law less than ourselves owning, sailing, soldiering, thieving, threatening, misers, menials, priests, alarming, air breathing, water drinking, on the turf or the sea beach dancing, cities wrenching, ease scorning, statutes mocking, feebleness chasing, fulfilling our foray. A Promise to California A promise to California, or inland to the great pastoral plains, and on to Puget Sound and Oregon, sojourning east a while longer, soon I travel toward you to remain, to teach robust American love, for I know very well that I and robust love belong among you inland and along the western sea, for these states tend inland and toward the western sea, and I will also. Here the frailest leaves of me. Here the frailest leaves of me, and yet my strongest lasting. Here I shade and hide my thoughts. I myself do not expose them, and yet they expose me more than all my other poems. No labour-saving machine. No labour-saving machine, nor discovery have I made, nor will I be able to leave behind me any wealthy bequest to found hospital or library, nor reminiscence of any deed of courage for America, nor literary success, nor intellect, nor book for the bookshelf, but a few carols, Vibrating through the air, I leave for comrades and lovers. A glimpse. A glimpse through an interstice court of a crowd of workmen and drivers in a barroom around the stove late of a winter night, and I, unremarked, seated in a corner of a youth who loves me and whom I love, silently approaching and seating himself near that he may hold me by the hand a long while, amid the noises of coming and going, of drinking and oath and smutty jest, there we two content, happy in being together, speaking little, perhaps not a word. A LEAF FOR HAND IN HAND 
a leaf for hand in hand you natural persons old and young you on the mississippi and on all the branches and bayous of the mississippi you friendly boatmen and mechanics you roughs you twain and all processions moving along the streets i wish to infuse myself among you till i see it common for you to walk hand in hand earth my likeness earth my likeness though you look so impassive ample and spheric there i now suspect that is not all i now suspect there is something fierce in you eligible to burst forth for an athlete is enamoured of me and i of him but toward him there is something fierce and terrible in me eligible to burst forth i dare not tell it in words not even in these songs i dreamed in a dream i dreamed in a dream i saw a city invincible to the attacks of the whole of the rest of the earth i dreamed that was the new city of friends nothing was greater there than the quality of robust love it loved the rest it was seen every hour in the actions of the men of that city and in all their looks and words what think you i take my pen in hand what think you i take my pen in hand to record the battleship perfect modelled majestic that i saw past the opping to-day under full sail the splendours of the past day or the splendour of the night that envelops me or the vaunted glory and growth of the great city spread around me no but merely of two simple men i saw to-day on the pier in the midst of the crowd parting the parting of dear friends the one to remain hung on the other's neck and passionately kissed him while the one to depart tightly pressed the one to remain in his arm to the east and to the west to the east and to the west to the man of the seaside state and of pennsylvania to the canadian of the north to the southerner i love these with perfect trust to depict you as myself the germs are in all men i believe the main purport of these states is to found a superb friendship exult previously unknown because i perceive it waits and has been always waiting latent in all men sometimes with one i love sometimes with one i love i fill myself with rage for fear i effuse unreturned love but now i think there is no unreturned love the pay is certain one way or another i loved a certain person ardently and my love was not returned yet out of that i have written these songs to a western boy many things to absorb i teach to help you become a lever of mine yet if blood like mine circle not in your veins if you be not silently selected by lovers and do not silently select lovers of what use is it that you seek to become a lever of mine fast anchored eternal o love fast anchored eternal o love o woman i love o bride o wife more resistless than i can tell the thought of you then separate as disembodied or another born ethereal the last athletic reality my consolation i ascend i float in the regions of your love o oh man o oh sharer of my roving life among the multitude among the men and women the multitude i perceive one picking me out by secret and divine signs acknowledging none else not parent wife husband brother child 
any nearer than I am. Some are baffled, but that one is not, that one knows me. Ah, lover, and perfect equal, I meant that you should discover me so by faint indirections. And I, when I meet you, mean to discover you by the like in you. O oh, you, whom I often and silently come, O oh, you, whom I often and silently come where you are, that I may be with you, as I walk by your side, or sit near, or remain in the same room with you, little you know the subtle electric fire that for your sake is playing within me. That shadow, my likeness, that shadow my likeness that goes to and fro seeking a livelihood chattering chaffering how often i find myself standing and looking at it where it flits how often i question and doubt whether that is really me but among my lovers and caroling these songs oh i never doubt whether that is really me full of life now full of life now Compact, visible, I, forty years old, the eighty-third year of the States, to one a century hence, or any number of centuries hence, to you yet unborn, these seeking you. When you read these, I that was visible, and become invisible, now it is you, compact, visible, realizing my poems, seeking me, fancying how happy you were if I could be with you and become your comrade. Be it as if I were with you. Be not too certain, but I am now with you. End of section 19 End of Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman Book 5 Calamus Section 20 of Aspects of Love, an Anthology. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. The Song of Solomon from the King James Version of the Bible. The Song of Songs which is Solomon's. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for thy love is better than wine, because of the savour of thy good ointments. Thy name is as ointment poured forth, therefore do the virgins love thee. Draw me, we will run after thee, the king hath brought me into his chambers. We will be glad and rejoice in thee. We will remember thy love more than wine. The upright love thee. I am black but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. Look not upon me, because I am black, because the sun hath looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards, but mine own vineyard have I not kept. Tell me, O thou whom my soul loveth, where thou feedest, where thou makest thy flock to rest at noon, for why should I be as one that turneth aside by the flocks of thy companions? If thou know not, O thou fairest among women, go thy way forth, by the footsteps of the flock, and feed thy kids beside the shepherd's tents. I have compared thee, O oh my love, to a company of horses in Pharaoh's chariots. Thy cheeks are comely with rows of jewels, thy neck with chains of gold. We will make thee borders of gold with studs of silver. While the king sitteth at his table, my speaker not sendeth forth the smell thereof. 
A bundle of mirth is my well-beloved unto me. He shall lie all night betwixt my breasts. My beloved is unto me as a cluster of camphire in the vineyards of Engedi. Behold, thou art fair, my love. Behold, thou art fair. Thou hast dove's eyes. Behold, thou art fair, my beloved, yea, pleasant. Also our bed is green. The beams of our house are cedar, and our rafters of fir. I am the rose of Sharon, and the lily of the valleys. As the lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. As the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. Stay me with flagons, comfort me with apples, for I am sick of love. His left hand is under my head, and his right hand doth embrace me. I charge ye, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, by the rose and by the hinds of the field, that ye stand not up, nor awake my love till he please. The voice of my beloved, behold, he cometh leaping upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills. My beloved is like a roe or a young heart. Behold, he standeth behind our wall. He looketh forth at the windows, showing himself through the lattice. My beloved spake and said unto me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. For lo, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of the singing of birds is come and the voice of the turtle is heard in our land. The fig tree putteth forth her green figs, and the vines with the tender grape give a good smell. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. O oh, my dove, that art in the clefts of the rock, in the secret places of the stairs, let me see thy countenance, let me hear thy voice, for sweet is thy voice, and thy countenance is comely. Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. My beloved is mine, and I am his, he feedeth among the lilies. Until the day break, and the shadows flee away, turn, my beloved, and be thou like a roe, or a young heart, upon the mountains of Betha. By night, on my bed, I sought him, whom my soul loveth. I sought him, but I found him not. I will rise now, and go about the city in the streets, and in the broad ways I will seek him, whom my soul loveth. I sought him, but I found him not. The watchmen that go about the city found me, to whom I said, Saw ye him, whom my soul loveth? It was but a little that I passed from them, but I found him whom my soul loveth. I held him, and would not let him go, until I had brought him into my mother's house, and into the chamber of her that conceived me. I charge you, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, by the rose and by the hinds of the field, that ye stir not up, nor awake my love till he please. Who is this that cometh out of the wilderness, like pillars of smoke, perfumed with myrrh and frankincense, with all powders of the merchant. Behold his bed, which is Solomon's. Three score valiant men are about it, at the valiant of Israel. They all hold swords, being expert in war. Every man hath his sword upon his thigh, because of fear in the night. King Solomon made himself a chariot, of the wood of Lebanon. He made the pillars thereof of silver, the bottom thereof of gold, the covering of it of purple, the midst thereof being paved with love, 
for the daughters of Jerusalem. Go forth, O ye daughters of Zion, and behold King Solomon, with the crown wherewith his mother crowned him, in the day of his espousals, and in the day of the gladness of his heart. Behold, thou art fair, my love, behold, thou art fair, thou hast dove's eyes within thy locks, thy hair is as a flock of goats that appear from Mount Gilead, thy teeth are like a flock of sheep that are even shorn, which came up from the washing, whereof every one bear twins, and none is barren among them. Thy lips are like a thread of scarlet, and thy speech is comely. Thy temples are like a piece of a pomegranate within thy locks. Thy neck is like the Tower of David, builded for an armory, whereon there hang a thousand bucklers, all shields of mighty men. Thy two breasts are like two young rows that are twins, which feed among the lilies. Until the day break, and the shadows be away, I will get me to the mountain of myrrh, and to the hill of frankincense. Thou art all fair, my love, there is no spot in thee. Come with me from Lebanon, my spouse, with me from Lebanon. Look from the top of Amana, from the top of Shanir and Hermon, from the lion's dens, from the mountains of the leopards. Thou hast ravished my heart, my sister, my spouse, thou hast ravished my heart with one of thine eyes, with one chain of thy neck. How fair is thy love, my sister, my spouse, how much better is thy love than wine, and the smell of thine ointments than all spices. Thy lips, O oh my spouse, drop as the honeycomb, honey and milk are under thy tongue, and the smell of thy garments is like the smell of Lebanon. A garden enclosed is my sister, my spouse, a spring shut up, a fountain sealed. Thy plants are an orchard of pomegranates, with pleasant fruits, camphire with spikenard, spikenard and saffron, calamus and cinnamon, with all trees of frankincense, myrrh and aloes, with all the chief spices, a fountain of gardens, a well of living waters, and streams from Lebanon. Awake, O north wind, and come, thou south, blow upon my garden, that the spices thereof may flow out. Let my beloved come into his garden, and eat his pleasant fruits. I am come into my garden, my sister, my spouse, I have gathered my myrrh with my spice, I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey, I have drunk my wine with my milk. Eat, O oh friends, drink, yea, drink abundantly, O oh, beloved. I sleep, but my heart waketh. It is the voice of my beloved that knocketh, saying, Open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled, for my head is filled with dew, and my locks with the drops of the night. I have put off my coat, how shall I put it on? I have washed my feet, how shall I defile them? My beloved put in his hand by the hole of the door, and my bowels were moved for him. I rose up to open to my beloved, and my hands dropped with mirth, and my fingers with sweet-smelling mirth upon the handles of the lock. I opened to my beloved, but my beloved had withdrawn himself and was gone. My soul failed when he spake. I sought him, but I could not find him. I called him, but he gave me no answer. The watchmen that went about the city found me. They smote me, they wounded me. The keepers of the walls took away my veil from me. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if ye find my beloved, that ye tell him that I am sick of love. What is thy beloved more than another beloved, O thou fairest among women? What is thy beloved more than another beloved, that thou dost so charge us? My beloved is white and ruddy, the cheapest among ten thousand. His head is as the most fine gold, 
His locks are bushy and black as a raven. His eyes are as the eyes of doves by the rivers of waters, washed with milk and fitly set. His cheeks are as a bed of spices, as sweet flowers, his lips like lilies, dropping sweet-smelling myrrh. His hands are as gold rings set with the beryl. His belly is as bright ivory overlaid with sapphires. His legs are as pillars of marble set upon sockets of fine gold. His countenance is as Lebanon, excellent as the cedars. His mouth is most sweet, yea, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved, and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. Whither is thy beloved gone, O thou fairest among women? Whither is thy beloved turned aside, that we may seek him with thee? My beloved is gone down into his garden, to the beds of spices, to feed in the gardens, and to gather lilies. I am my beloved, and my beloved is mine. He feedeth among the lilies. Thou art beautiful, O oh my love, as Tirza, comely as Jerusalem, terrible as an army with banners. Turn away thine eyes from me, for they have overcome me. Thy hair is as a flock of goats that appear from Gilead. Thy teeth are as a flock of sheep which go up from the washing, whereof every one beareth twins, and there is not one barren among them. As a piece of a pomegranate are thy temples within thy locks. There are threescore queens and fourscore concubines and virgins without number. My dove, my undefiled, is but one. She is the only one of her mother. She is the choice one of her that bare her. The daughters saw her and blessed her, yea, the queens and the concubines, and they praised her. Who is she that looketh forth as the morning, fair as the moon, clear as the sun, and terrible as an army with banners? I went down into the garden of nuts to see the fruits of the valley, and to see whether the vine flourished and the pomegranates budded. Or ever I was aware, my soul made me like the chariots of Amanidib. Return, return, O Shulamite, return, return, that we may look upon thee. What will ye see in the Shulamite, as it were the company of two armies? How beautiful are thy feet with shoes, O prince's daughter! The joints of thy thighs are like jewels, the work of the hands of a cunning workman. Thy navel is like a round goblet, which wanteth not liquor. Thy belly is like an heap of wheat, set about with lilies. Thy two breasts are like two young rows that are twins. Thy neck is as a tower of ivory, thine eyes like the fish pools in Heshbon by the gate of Bathrabim. Thy nose is as the tower of Lebanon, which looketh towards Damascus. Thine head upon thee is like Carmel, and the hair of thine head like purple. The king is held in the galleries. How fair and how pleasant art thou, O love, for delights! This thy stature is like to a palm tree, and thy breasts to clusters of grapes. I said, I will go up to the palm tree, I will take hold of the boughs thereof. Now also thy breasts shall be as clusters of the vine, and the smell of thy nose like apples and the roof of thy mouth like the best wine for my beloved, that goeth down sweetly, causing the lips of those that are asleep to speak. I am my beloved's, and his desire is toward me. Come, my beloved, let us go forth into the field, let us lodge in the villages. 
Let us get up early to the vineyards. Let us see if the vine flourish, whether the tender grape appear, and the pomegranates bud forth. There will I give thee my loves. The mandrakes give a smell, and at our gates are all manner of pleasant fruits, new and old, which I have laid up for thee, O my beloved. O oh, that thou wert as my brother, that sucked the breasts of my mother. When I should find thee without, I would kiss thee, yea, I should not be despised. I would lead thee, and bring thee into my mother's house, who would instruct me. I would cause thee to drink of spiced wine, of the juice of my pomegranate. His left hand should be under my head, and his right hand should embrace me. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, that ye stir not up, nor awake my love, until he please. Who is this that cometh up from the wilderness, leaning upon her beloved? I raise thee up under the apple tree. There thy mother brought thee forth, there she brought thee forth that bare thee. Set me as a seal upon thine heart, as a seal upon thine arm, for love is strong as death, jealousy is cruel as the grave, the coals that offer coals of fire, which hath a most vehement flame. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. If a man would give all the substance of his house for love, it would utterly be condemned. We have a little sister, and she hath no breasts. What shall we do for our sister in the day when she shall be spoken for? If she be a wall, we will build upon her a palace of silver, and if she be a door, we will enclose her with boards of cedar. I am a wall, and my breasts like towers, then was I in his eyes as one that found favour. Solomon had a vineyard at Balhamon. He let out the vineyard unto keepers. Every one for the fruit thereof was to bring a thousand pieces of silver. My vineyard, which is mine, is before me. Thou, O Solomon, must have a thousand, and those that keep the fruit thereof two hundred. Thou, that dwellest in the gardens, the companions, hearken to thy voice, cause me to hear it. Make haste, my beloved, and be thou like to a roe, or to a young heart, upon the mountains of spices. End of section 20 End of Aspects of Love, an Anthology, by various authors, translated by John Myers O'Hara and others.